In this video, we are going to talk about, can we live on Kepler-452b? Let's find out. Kepler is the most Earth-like planet ever discovered, a place with just enough sunlight to possibly support the crops and house plants of life forms like ourselves. But don't pack your bags just yet. While the planet might seem like a tantalizing target for NASA's next mission, it's extremely unlikely that human beings will ever set foot on Kepler. Thanks to 1,400 light years, they would have to travel to get there. The separate discovery of the closest confirmed rocky exoplanet to Earth, HD 219,134 b, was announced by NASA. That one's only 21 light years away. So what makes Kepler so great? NASA called it Earth 2.0 for a reason. It's a Goldilocks planet, meaning it sits in the habitable zone of its star, where the temperatures are not too hot or cold for liquid water to form. HD 219,134 b, on the other hand, is a broiler of a planet, way too close to its sun for water or life to ever develop. Scientists still need more data, but there is a strong possibility that Kepler has a rocky surface and a thick atmosphere. It might not be Risa, the tropical vacation planet from Star Trek, the next generation, but it's the best candidate NASA has found so far for another planet that might support life. Kepler 452b is the name of a star in the constellation of Cygnus, the Swan. It's a star that's similar to our own Sun, but it's too faint for us to see from Earth without a telescope. Kepler is about 1,800 light years away, which means it currently would take a spacecraft about 30 meters years to travel there. At least one planet is orbiting the star, it's called Kepler, and astronomers have wondered whether it could be home to alien life. Kepler is sometimes called Earth's cousin, or Earth 2.0 and some astronomers have nicknamed it Coruscant, which is the name of the home of the Galactic Empire in the Star Wars films. Another Earth We don't know whether life exists on Kepler, but we do know that it has some things in common with the Earth. For instance, Kepler takes 385 Earth days to complete its orbit around its star, which is only a bit longer than one Earth year. Astronomers say that the planet is in the Goldilocks zone, meaning that the distance of the planet from its star is just right making it not too hot and not too cold for life to exist. The same is true of the Earth in our own solar system. Venus is too close to the Sun and is so hot that water would boil. Mars is too far away from the Sun and is so cold that water freezes. But the Earth and Kepler are both at just the right distances from their stars so that water can be liquid, at a temperature between 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Do you think Mars has a better environment than Kepler? Let me know in the comments. Also watch my video about Mars, I'll put it in the description. Do you like this video so far? And don't you want to miss anything about this subject? Then please subscribe to this channel. Thank you. How far away is 1,400 light years? Even in science fiction, that is not a quick journey. If Captain Jean-Luc Picard wanted to travel from Earth to Kepler, it would take the US Enterprise more than 16 months traveling at warp 8 to reach its destination. That is for a ship that can go faster than the speed of light, which as far as we know is impossible. Sticking to existing technology, a trip to Kepler might take so long human beings could evolve into a different species before the spacecraft completed its mission. NASA's New Horizons probe, which recently sent back amazing photos of Pluto, would take around 20,000 years to travel one light year, according to Jeffrey Bennett, astronomer and author of What is Relativity? an intuitive introduction to Einstein's ideas and why they matter. At that pace, it would take 28 million years to reach Kepler, Bennett told NBC News. Lucy, also known as Australopithecus afarensis, lived approximately 3.2 million years ago. It's not hard to imagine human beings would look completely different by the time a craft launched today reached its remote destination. More advanced technology could shorten the trip, but even with advanced engines, reaching Kepler seems like an impossible goal. Not an easy trip. To reach Earth 2.0, humans would probably have to rely on a multi-generational ship loaded with more than 100 people to maintain genetic diversity and enough power to take care of them in future generations, Liu said. The people on the ship would have to be shielded from intense solar radiation and stay clear of supernovas, which can emit the equivalent of 10 billion years of sunlight in a single blast according to Leo. The spacecraft would also have to endure the impact of interstellar dust, which would wear its hull down over the course of 2,000 years. It's only a matter of time before that would waste any kind of shielding, Blue said. One bonus of traveling really, really fast, 
time moves much slower for the person moving than for those who are left behind. At 70% the speed of light, only 1,428 years, would go by on the spaceship, compared to 2,000 years on Earth. Going at the much more impossible speed of 99.9999999% the speed of light, a spaceship would get to Kepler in a little more than 1,400 years as experienced on Earth, but its passengers would barely have aged a month. That would make space travel pretty convenient, if it were possible. But what about the interstellar solution? Can't we hurl Matthew McConaughey through a wormhole and hope for the best? Yeah, but that is almost certainly not going to happen. As astronomer Sten Odenwald told NBC News, wormholes, if they exist, could probably only be formed through something like the Big Bang or the implosion of a star. Ultimately, while traveling to Kepler would be an amazing accomplishment, human beings might be better off colonizing a nearby planet. Besides, who wants to spend their life on a spaceship when they could be eating home-cooked meals and watching Netflix on Mars? Measuring Mass Astronomers have also managed to measure the size of the planet Kepler. They can do this because the planet passes in front of its star once every orbit, as seen from Earth. When the planet does this, it blocks a small part of the star's light, so that it gets a bit fainter for a few hours. By measuring the amount of the dip in light, scientists have worked out that Kepler is about one and a half times the size of the Earth. If the star Kepler was closer to us, and therefore brighter, astronomers could measure how much it wobbles as it's pulled backwards and forwards by the planet orbiting it. They could then use that measurement to work out the mass of Kepler. This is not possible, but we can still make a good guess about the mass of the planet. If it's made of rock, like the Earth, then the mass of Kepler 452b must be about five times greater than Earth's. This would mean that gravity on the planet is about twice as strong as on Earth, so you would weigh twice as much there as you do here, and it would be twice as hard to jump. The next discovery. Other things about Kepler are much more uncertain. If it really is a super-Earth-sized planet, then it may have lots of active volcanoes. It may also have a thick atmosphere with clouds covering most of its surface. We don't know what the atmosphere of the planet is made of, so we don't know whether you could breathe the air there. It's very unlikely to be the same mix of oxygen and nitrogen as the Earth's atmosphere, though. Kepler may not be exactly like the Earth, but it's probably the most Earth-like planet that astronomers have found so far. The European Space Agency's Pileido spacecraft will be launched in 2026, carrying a set of telescopes which will search for more Earth-like planets around nearby stars. Plato will probably discover several dozen planets that are even more like the Earth than Kepler, and many of those will be much closer to us.